IXL section BB7, solving a quadratic equation using the zero product property. All right, so this IXL is very simple, but it's very important. Okay, uh, first of all, we're going to be using the zero product property. The zero product property states that for all real numbers A and B, if A times B equals zero, then A equals zero or B equals zero. Okay, now first let me show you how you're gonna solve these problems and then let me explain what they mean or, or what's the significance of these problems. All right, so here I have an example of what you're gonna be doing. It says solve for F. They have here a quadratic equation that's already been factored for you, all right? So all you have to do is very simple. All you have to do is set each factor equal to zero. So f minus three equal to zero and f plus four equal to zero. I'm just setting each factor. This is one factor and this is the other factor. Set each factor equal to zero and solve for the variable. So in this one, it says f minus three equals zero. So therefore, f has to equal positive three. And in this one, f plus 4 equals 0, so therefore f has to equal, when I move the 4 to the right, it becomes negative, so f equals negative 4. And those are my answers. That's it. I'm done. My answers are f equals 3 or f equals negative 4. What that means is that when I substitute a 3 right here, this will give me 0, and 0 times whatever this is will equal 0. And if I plug in the negative 4 here, negative 4 plus 4 equals 0. And 0 times whatever this is will make the whole thing equal 0. Okay, now let's go over the significance of, of these problems. All right, so in these problems, what we're finding is what's called the zeros of a function. The zeros of a function are the values of x that will make the function equal to 0. So let me give you an example to demonstrate what this means, all right? Here I have a function. I want to know what values of x will make this function equal to 0. So look how I can figure that out. First thing I'm going to do is write the function and put it equal to 0. Because I want to know what, value, what values of x will make this function equal to 0. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is factor the function. When I factor it, I get this. How did I factor that? Easy. I needed two numbers here that when you multiply them equal 18, but when you add them equal 9. So that's how I got this, x plus 6 times x plus 3. Okay, now the next step is to set each one of these factors. This is what you're going to be doing in this IXL is from this step forward. All right, from this step forward is what you're doing in today's IXL. Okay. I'm going to set each factor equal to 0, all right? So I set this factor equal to 0 and this factor equal to 0. And now I solve for the variable. So in this equation, x has to equal negative 6 because when you move 6 to the right, it becomes negative. And in this equation, the solution for x has to be x equals negative 3 because when I move the 3 to the right, it becomes negative. Okay, now what does this mean? It means a couple things, all right? Our answers. First of all, if I substitute negative 6 into this function, all right, f of negative 6, if I put a negative 6 here and a negative 6 here and work this out, my answer will equal 0, all right? Because if I put, for example, negative 6 to the second power plus 9 times negative 6, plus 18. This will give me 36 when I work it out. This will give me negative 54. And when I go from left to right, 36 minus 54 is negative 18. And negative 18 plus 18 equals 0. So when I plug in negative 6 into this function, I get a y value, or f of x will equal um, when I, let me say that again. When I plug in negative 6 into this function, the answer that it'll give me is 0. And when I plug in negative 3 into this function, it's also going to equal 0. 
If I put a negative 3 in there, and work this out, negative 3 to the second power is positive 9. 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. Now when I go from left to right, 9 minus 27 is negative 18. Negative 18 plus 18 equals 0. All right? Now, the most important thing of all to understand is this. What this is telling us, is that when I graph when I graph this function these are the two x intercepts let me show you when I graph this function this is what I get and the zeros are telling us that this is where the graph um, intersects the x axis okay the the graph of this quadratic function intersects the x-axis at x equals negative 3, that's what it's telling me right here, and at x equals negative 6. Alright, that's probably the main thing that you need to take away from this. That's what the zeros of the function mean. That's going to come up again, not just for the upcoming test, but for the one after it as well. Alright, we're going to do more IXLs involving this, but this allows us to quickly identify where it is that the graph of this parabola passes the x-axis, okay? So are you going to have to do all this in this IXL? No, I'm just explaining to you what it means so that you can better understand it. But in this IXL, all you're going to do is from... In this IXL, all you're doing is from this step, they're going to the, gonna give you this question, and you got to do this to it. F solve for the two values of x or whatever variable they give you. All right, so let's look at some more examples. All right, so these are the examples from your IXL. Okay, so right here is my quadratic uh, equation that's already been factored, okay? So all I gotta do is set each factor. They're giving me this. All you gotta do is set each factor equal to zero. This r is one factor, so I put r equals 0, and r plus 8 is the other factor, so I put r plus 8 equals 0. In this one, r is already by itself, so it's already finished. You don't have to do anything else. In this one, you got to move the 8 to the right by subtracting, so r equals negative 8. Obviously, you can do that mental math, and you should do it mental math. You should not have to write anything out. You should just look at it and be able to do almost all of the the uh, problems in this IXL. So my two answers are r equals 0 and r equals negative 8. Those are my two answers. Let's look at the next example right here. They're giving us g times g plus 7 equals 0. So I set each factor equal to 0. And now I just solve for g in each one. In this one, g is already by itself, so it's already solved for. I don't need to do anything else. In this one, I need to, to move the 7 to the right, so g equals negative 7. So these are my answers. g equals 0 and g equals negative 7. As you can see, whenever you have a variable by itself here, it's always going to equal 0. All right, let's do the third one. All of these are similar on this slide. Let's do the third one where you got to solve for z. All right, so in this one, I got z times 9z mi <clears throat> minus 7. So again, I set each factor equal to 0. So here's my first answer, z equals 0. And this one's going to be 9z minus 7 equals 0. In this one, I got to first move the 7 to the right making it 9z equals 7, and now divide by 9, so z is going to equal 7 over 9. And those are my two answers. So z equals 0, and z equals 7 over 9. By the way, the quick way to write this in IXO is like that, so that you don't have to mess with fractions. Just put 7 slash 9, that means the same thing as 7 over 9. Okay, uh, now here we have some other examples, slightly different but still easy. 
So in this one, the first one, they have h plus 6 times h minus 9 equals 0. So these are really easy. Again, you should ju just do these mental math. But just to explain them, I set each factor equal to 0 and solve for h. So in this one, h equals negative 6. And in this one, h equals positive 9. All right, so those are my two answers. And again, that's that's uh, what that means is that when you graph this function, this quadratic function, okay, the um, the parabola is going through these uh, these points on the x-axis. All right, that's what it means. Let's look at the second one. I have s plus 5 times s minus 4 equals 0 so set each factor equal to 0 and solve for s so here s equals negative 5 and here s equals positive 4 very simple negative 5 and positive 4 the third one, I have v plus 9 times v plus 8 equals 0. Set each factor equal to 0 and solve for the variable. So here v equals negative 9, and here v equals negative 8. All right, let's look at a few more examples. Okay, so here, the first one, 3y minus 4 times 4y minus 9 equals 0. So set each factor equal to 0 and solve for y. All right, so in this one, first I got to move the 4 to the right, or making it positive. So 3y equals positive 4, and then divide by 3, so y equals 4 over 3. In this one, first, what did I write here? Oh, first move the 9 to the right, making it positive. And then divide by 4. You always got to check if you could simplify the fractions, but in this case, they cannot be simplified. So those are my two answers. All right, now let's look at the second one. I have... 7t minus 4 times 5t minus 8 equals 0. So once again, set each factor equal to 0 and solve for t. All right, so in this case, first I move the 4 to the right, making it positive, and then I divide by 7. And in this one, first I move the 8 to the right, making it positive, and then I divide by 5. So those are my two answers. And then the last example on this slide, I have 5g plus 2 times 2g minus 7 equals 0. So set each factor equal to 0. Okay, now let's solve for g. So first move the 2 to the right, which is going to make it negative, And then divide by 5. And over here, first move the 7 to the right, making it positive and then divide by a 2. And those are my two answers there. g equals negative 2 over 5 and g equals 7 over 2. Okay, we have three more examples for this IXL. So let me start at the top. I have 3w plus 2 times negative 4w plus 3 equals 0. 
Let's set each factor equal to zero and solve for W. First move the two to the right, making it negative. So three W equals negative two. Now divide by three. So W equals negative two over three. Over here, first make, move the three to the right, making it negative. And then divide by negative four. A negative divided by a negative equals a positive. So that's gonna equal positive three over four. Let's look at the second one here. We have seven T minus five times nine T plus four equals zero. Set each factor equal to zero. And solve for t. First move the 5 here to the right, making it positive. So 7t equals 5. And then divide by 7. So t equals 5 divided by 7. Over here, first move the 4 to the right, making it negative. And then divide by 9. So t equals negative 4 over nine. Those are my two answers. And then the last example, we have negative eight y plus seven times y minus eight equals zero. Let's set each factor equal to zero. Now let's solve for y. So here, first you move the seven to the right, making it negative, then divide by negative eight. A negative divided by a negative equals a positive, so y is gonna equal positive seven divided by, positive seven over eight. Let me write that over here since it's hard to read there. Seven over eight. And then on this one, just move the eight to the right and make it positive. So y equals eight, and those are my answers. All right, guys, that's it for this IXL section BB7. You have a test coming up very soon in your algebra class that involves all these IXLs on quadratic functions. So make sure if you haven't done them to get caught up really quickly because they're really important, and even after this upcoming algebra exam, you're still going to have more stuff involving it, and it's super important. All right, guys, that's it for this lesson. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys next class.